In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, faithfuls, those who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, we pray the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one in nature, one in essence, bless you, guide you, and protect you, deliver you from the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible or invisible. We pray this in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, mighty name, amen. The gospel for today's liturgy is taken from the gospel according to St. John, and our church fathers have chosen parts from chapter 3 and chapter 4 of the gospel according to St. John. From chapter 3, the uh, reading is from verses 22 to 36, inclusive, which is the end of the chapter. And then chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. And according to the church calendar, this is the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. And the reading for today from the Holy Gospel is from the Gospel of St. John. To understand these beautiful verses and what is the message of these beautiful verses the message is to get to know God to get to know God when we read in the beginning of chapter 3 we'll see there is a conversation there's a dialect between the Lord Jesus and Nicodemus one of the elders the 70 um, members of the Sanhedrin and also a leader of a synagogue. In other words, a very learned man, a very well educated and embedded in the Old Testament. So that conversation happens between the Lord and Nicodemus. And I was talking about being born again, which is one of the seven sacraments of the true church of Christ being the holy baptism and what is the holy baptism enlightenment enlightenment now today's gospel the disciples of John the Baptist the disciples of John the Baptist approach their teacher John and they say, you know that person that you spoke of and testified of, you know, um, on the other side of the Jordan, guess what? He is also baptizing and there is a lot of people going to him, not to you. There is a lot of people going to him, not to you. John the Baptist replied to, their, to his disciples, and he said, it is absolutely natural for him to grow and for me to be less and less. Why? Because he is the groom and I am the friend of the groom. The groom is the one who has the bride and I, the friend of the groom, when I hear his voice, I rejoice. I'm the groom's best man. And this is where we get the best man when we wed a beautiful couple. There is a groom's best man resembling John the Baptist. Yes. So he said, I am the groom's best man. The ultimate I could do is to stand next to the groom, but the occasion is not about the groom's best man. The occasion is about the groom. He is the center of attention. He is the one where all people come to see and greet and congratulate and be with. You don't go to weddings to, to focus on the groom's best man or the bride's maid. You focus on the couple. This is their occasion. This is their day. And this is all about them. So he said to his disciples, why are you so worried 
that people are going to him instead of me. My role is to pave the way for the Messiah and I came because I was sent by him to prepare the way. I've done my part. I came and I said, baptize and repent because the one who's going to come after me, who is before me, he will baptize you by the power of the Holy Spirit. He will baptize you with fire. I baptize you with normal water. So you need to go to him. And when you go to him, which you must go to him because unless you go to him, you will never get to know him. And this is the message of today's gospel, knowing God. I'll read a couple of verses from chapter 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed but he who does but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God so what is the judgment condemnation in other words judgment the light has come into the world but men or people chose darkness over the light they preferred darkness over the light because their deeds were of evil origin. They didn't want to come to the light lest their evil deeds being exposed. So what did they do? Instead of acknowledging the light, they rejected the light for one simple reason. They were not willing to give up their personal pleasures for the sake of Christ. And so many people are doing exactly the same thing in our time and age. The issue is, it is us, not the Lord. The light came to the world. Now, who is this light that came to the world? The sun, S-O-N, who is the S-U-N of the world. The S-O-N, the beloved only son of, the, of his heavenly father, came into the world to be the S-U-N of the world. But the people who were living for the world, they chose darkness over the light. They rejected Christ because they realized if we accept Jesus, that means we have to change and we are unwilling to change we're not willing to accept the Lord Jesus you need to stop going to the club and coming to the church I'm not ready to accept the Lord Jesus you need to humble yourself before others I'm not ready to accept the Lord Jesus you need to forgive others who have hurt you I am not ready I'm not To accept the Lord Jesus, I need to give up on the things I love, which God despises, and I am not ready. So what did I do? I said to God, as they do in basketball, time out. Not ready for you yet. But the problem is, the light moves. This is why scientists can only measure light, cannot measure darkness. Because ma darkness does not exist. It's not a creative thing. God created the light, not darkness. 
That's why the light can only be measured. Darkness cannot because it is an uncreated thing. So when the light moves and if we don't catch up with it, if we don't move with it, we'll remain in darkness. And what is darkness? The absence of light. The light passed me by and, and said hello. I didn't say hello back. He moved on. He continued moving. And as the light moved, I stopped. I did not follow the light. When I stopped, the light passed me by. When the light left, what was remaining? Darkness. Darkness. I heard the voice saying to me, come to church. And then another voice called me and said, you want to go out? Let's talk our language. There's a lot of, there's a, a lot of depth in theology in these passages, but I don't want to speak to you theologically. So the other voice said to me, let's go out. One voice said, come to the church. The other one said, let's go to the club. One voice said to me, let's go to Christ. The other one said, let's go to Satan. One voice said to me, let's go uptown. The other one said, let's go downtown. Whichever voice I chose to follow, that's where I will end up being. I choose the voice that leads to light, I will live in the light. And if I choose the voice that leads to darkness, do not be shocked. Why are you in darkness? This is what you chose, my dear son, my dear daughter. Do not be shocked. And then when we ended up in darkness, we came back and blamed God. Why did you do this to me? Amazing. Amazing. The light came into the world. Men, people of the world chose darkness over the light because their deeds were evil. Christ is the light of the world. And what is this light? Life. What is this light? Life. Now, since light is life, then what is darkness? Death. And what is death, biblically speaking? Separation from God. You see, when the spirit separates the body, that's called transition. It's not death, departure. And who departs? The living, not the dead. The dead cannot depart, meaning cannot travel. Who travels? Those who are living. Who goes to the airport? The living ones, not the dead ones. So when you traveling, what do you do when you are departing from one place to another? When the spirit leaves the body, that is departure. You are alive, you're not dead. So those who think, those souls who left this world into the next and refer to them as dead, excuse me, who travels? The dead or the living? Khabibi. Do you know who's the dead one? The ones are, who are remaining on earth. They are the dead ones. The one who left are the living ones. You know why? Because the one who left will sin no more. And the wages of sin is death. So who is sinning? The one who is remaining on earth, still living in this flesh. But what is the true death when the spirit departs from God, separates from God. Now this is the eternal death. Light came into the world and the people of the world chose darkness over the light because their deeds were of evil origin. When they chose darkness, they chose death over life. Now, what is light, biblically speaking, knowledge? 
What is light, biblically speaking? Knowledge. The Lord says, the eye is the lamp to the body. And when you read throughout the Holy Bible, and more so in Genesis, talks about the cherubims, which are the highest rank in the angelic order, the highest rank in the angelic order, the cherubims are full of eyes inside and out, inwardly and outwardly. The eye in the Bible represents knowledge and the eye is the light to this body. Therefore, light represents knowledge. So life, in order to be gained, first we need to know. In John 17, 3, the Lord Jesus is talking. John 17, 3, the Lord says, And this is the eternal life, that they may know you, that you are God alone and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So how do we gain eternal life? By knowing God and Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So in order to gain life, I need to know. And in order to gain death, I also need to know. You see, there is one kind of knowledge that leads to death and one kind of knowledge that leads to life. It is up to us which kind of knowledge we choose to accept. The knowledge of the world definitely leads to darkness. And darkness is death, evil. Where will we end up with Satan in hell? Total separation from the Almighty God this is eternal death. And there is another knowledge to get to know God and Jesus Christ who was sent by God the Father. When you come to know Jesus Christ, you are coming to know the light of the world because he is the light of the world. So when you come to know the Lord Jesus, that will lead you to his light because light is knowledge. Getting to know him is light that knowledge is light when you walk in the light you are walking in eternal life and this is what i'm trying to get to when you come to know the lord jesus once you get to know him you will do one thing only love him you will fall in love with him that's why john the baptist is talking about the groom not any love eros love intimate matrimonial love now why now please pay attention why when it came to knowing god John the Baptist spoke about the Lord Jesus as the heavenly groom. Why? He said, go and meet the groom. Why? You know why? Because the only place, the only place, the only place where the two become one is in marriage. Is in marriage. Where the two become one is in marriage. When you get married, you go crazy. Some will agree, some will say, not sure. By the way, my intention is, is good. I don't mean anything bad. But you will go crazy. On a human level, you'll go crazy in good ways and in bad ways. 
I'll tell you how you go crazy when you get married. Poor mom and dad. When I say mom, I mean parents. Mom, dad, same. God bless every mom and every, every, every dad. You know, parents, they sacrifice so long and so hard to raise their children. And whether it's the mother or the father, the mom will come and says, my daughter, my son, please do this for me. My son, do this for me. They gave their life for their son. Right? They sacrifice all their life raising their son. Son now is an adult, mature adult. For the son to do one little things for mom or dad, all hell breaks loose. I will jump up and down, right and left, go there, go there, everywhere. Old McDonald's had a farm. Ia, ia, yo. So I'll go everywhere begging everyone and my son, please, I beg you, I, cr I screamed, no use. I spoke nicely, no use. I cried, no use. I was angry, no use. I tried everything under the sun by the time he just picked up one little thing and done it for me, I started having white hairs. This man meets this girl. One phone call. Come here. Before she finishes, come here, he is there. The mother is looking at the son. Kiriya Laison. Ya Rabburham. Lord have mercy. Is this the same man that I've raised all my life? Son, I'm your mother. I'm your father. I've been begging you for 25 years, for 30 years to do one thing. You gave me nothing but mischief, heartaches, and headaches. This girl came the other day. She got you ready. She took you ready. I done the hard work. She came easy way. She took you and you ran like crazy for her. Why didn't you do that for mom? He will say, mom, because the way I love you is not the way I love her. When you fall in love, you will act crazy. You will talk crazy. The language of love. So when you are heaven, you haven't fallen in love with Christ, you will not understand the language of love. When the two become one. So when someone else has fallen in love with Christ and talks, you will not understand that language because you haven't fallen in love with him as yet. So to you, you will see it out of the line offensive but to the one who is in love with the Lord it's the core of that relationship and those who have ears to hear let them hear if they think they are someone or something special may the Lord have mercy You know, when you fall in love, you will say things you've never said before, and you will do things you've never done before. And let me tell you one thing about God when He is all love, when He came, when He came to create the human being. Everything he created with a word. But when he, when he came to create us, he didn't do that. He said, let there be light. And there was. With a word he created. But when he came to creating us, he said, let us go down and make man in our image according to our likeness. 
What did God make Adam out of? Mud. The word Adam in the Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac language, the original text, means red mud, literally. Idamtha. Dam in Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac means blood. Idamtha, red mud. So when God came to creating Adam, the first creation of the human race, he put his hands in the mud. Now my question is, who puts their hand in the mud? Little kids. But the problem is, little kids, that's all they know. They don't know any better. You tell them don't play in the mud, they go and jump in the mud and make all their clothes, which mom just bought them and changed them and clothed them with clean clothing. They just destroyed it all. Kids play in the mud because that's all they know. But God is the source of wisdom. God is the source of wisdom. God is the Almighty. How come God you put your hands in the mud to make us? He said, when you love, you'll do crazy things. Even God did something out of the ordinary. Because I love you more than me. I acted like a little kid, yet I am the source of wisdom. Wow. Wow. A grown-up man, an adult man, acts like a little kid in front of his wife. And an adult woman acts like a little child in front of her husband. Because it's love. It's love. Pray, my dear friend, for the Lord to bring you into his intimate matrimonial bond love. You need to enter that love and fall in love with Christ, my dear friend, to understand the language of love. Your PhD won't even get you Fairfield Nita City. So stop acting like a fool. Be a grown up. I think that went home, did it? My beloveds. The Lord came to give us that ultimate opportunity to know Him. God, the invisible one, the unreachable one, the one that you can never comprehend, came to give you that golden opportunity once in a lifetime, once in existence, to get to know the God that is never able to be known. That's why he became a man like us. This man that came over 2,000 years ago is the light of the world. God revealed in the flesh. He came to give me that opportunity to know him because the only way to gain eternal life, John 17, 3, is to know God and Jesus Christ. And the only way to know in God is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. So if any religious leader, no matter what kind of a caliber they hold, any religious leader that comes and says, you can get to know God outside of Jesus Christ is the son of a snake. Yes? There is no way to God except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Period, period, period. No one, no one, no one. And if any religious leader tells you that you can get to know God outside of Jesus Christ is a liar and the son of the liars of all. Enough of this hypocrisy, enough of this cowardness. Selling your master, worse than Judas Iscariot you are.
I love everyone, but I will not compromise over my Jesus Christ. Not, not. He is the only way, whether you are a Christian or not, He is the only way. You will find out, my dear friend, sooner or later. Believe me, I'm talking to you with love and respect. The Lord took me to the other side. There is no one but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No. If you think Buddha is going to get you there, you're mistaken. If you think Muhammad is going to get you there, you're mistaken. If you think Krishna and over three million gods of in the Hinduism believe, you are mistaken. The cow will not get you to heaven. It is the Lord. His name is Yeshua. Yeshua, Jesus, Isos Christos. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only one and the only way. The light came to the world to give the world the chance to get to know the light. But when you get to know the light, you fall in love with him. Because we've always said this, what leads to love is knowledge. What leads to love is knowledge. What leads to love is knowledge. You cannot claim to love someone you do not know. You can only love the one you came to know. So first you need to know the person in order to be able to love the person. But you see in today's gospel, but those who do the truth, who do good deeds, they love the light. They come to the light for their deeds to be seen that they are done by God in them. So the good deeds, where are they from? God. So when any one of us does a good deed, remember it's not you, it is the Lord Jesus who dwells in you, made you do the good deed. Without the Lord, I am the most poisonous, the ugliest, the worst of all without the Lord. But when the Lord overtakes the heart, you see me a nice person. I'm not. It is the Lord who is good, not me. So when I went and greeted someone, it was the Lord in me who greeted that someone. The Lord took me to greet that someone. When I was able to forgive someone who has given me nothing but hell, it was the Lord who did it in me. Every good deed is, comes from the good God. But those who do the good deeds love the light. And they come to the light so their deeds are revealed before the whole world that they are done by God in them. So there is work deed I need to know someone in order to love them and when I love them I'll do all the things that make them happy you see <laughs> why don't you want to go to church because you still haven't loved the Lord enough to do the deed that makes Jesus happy that's why you're not going to church Stop, stop uh, finding excuses. I don't have the time. I, no, 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 no. How come when you fell in love with this girl, you dropped everything for her? Stop finding excuses. Please be a man, even if you're a girl, and that's not a GLB, LGBT, whatever it is. GLBT. <laughs> and maybe we change it from LGBT to GLBT, BBC, KFC. I love those people, but I can never acknowledge and accept their way of living. But I love them, I pray for them. It's very simple, man. no hard feelings. Nothing personal, my dear friend. I will, I'll always pray for you to come back to the Lord Jesus, repent and receive the Lord as Lord and Savior. But for me to accept it and say it's okay, like some so-called churches, den of thieves, shame on you. To wave their whatever flag it is, I will never call you a church. Satan be gone.
The 21st century language, get lost. <sighs> Knowledge leads to love. And what does love do? Gives you life. What is hell? Hell is a place where love does not exist or is absent. Can I live or taste hell on earth? Yes. Live a life that has no love in it. That is hell. And I'm sure some of us along the way, we have had a small glimpse and a small taste of what hell is about. When I came at a certain time frame in my life where love was absent, nobody wanted to love me. Everybody was against me. How was I living? Ask yourself, wasn't it hell? Yes. Why? Because love was absent. Were you dead? No, I was still living. I'm not dead. But why was it hell? Because what makes life life is love. The absence of love is hell. And what is hell? No life. What's the point living where love is absent? I'm dead. There is no life. See, the world is missing love. That's why they're trying frantically to live, but they are ending up killing, destroying themselves. When a young man or a woman, my son, my beloved son and my beloved daughter, I love you, but the Lord loves you the most. I was a teenager like you. I was a youngster like you. Before I became Santa Claus, I was one of you. One day I was 14, I was 15, I was 18, I was 19, 20, 21, 24, 28. Trust me, no use. So we try to explore things. We try to go and experience it for ourselves, discover it for ourselves. What do we do at the end? Destroy ourselves, hurt ourselves, veer off the road, and we find ourselves somewhere very dark, ugly, not knowing what to do next. We need to choose to come to know the light of the world, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy and mighty name. And when we come to know him, we fall in love with him. When you fall in love with him, that love gives you life. And when you are alive, then you're able to do good deeds. A dead person cannot work, only the living one. Now, when it comes to work or doing something, two things are required, love and will, W-I-L-L, -L. love and will. Why? Because I'll never do something I don't love and I'll never be able to choose something unless there is a will. So the will is to choose it, the love is to do it. Yes? I chose it willingly, I did it lovingly. So when, when you get to know the Lord Jesus, you love him. Now when you love him, you'll do all the things that make him happy. Just like the husband does all the things that makes his wife happy. The wife never does anything. <laughs> Just kidding. 
Even the bishops sometimes are naughty. <laughs> but you have no choice. You're living in the Western world. You have to do everything for your wife. Otherwise, you will not sleep at home. <laughs> Go to mama. But when you love, truly you love someone, you will go out of your way. You will act in a way the world will see you as if you are out of your mind, as if you are, are crazy. You have lost it. Yes, because the world do not understand the language of love. When you become one with your sweetheart, matrimonial bond, Christ is the groom for heaven's sake and the church is his bride. Christians are the church. When we come to Christ, remember, we are united to him by the precious blood which he shed on Calvary and made us one in him. Because this is matrimonial bond between Christ the man, church, the bride, the woman. We became one. The only one who will understand the language of this love is when he becomes one with Christ. If you haven't yet, even if you are a Christian, even if you are a church leader, if you haven't fallen in love with Christ, if you haven't become united with him, giving your life to him, you will not understand the language of Eros, intimate language intimate love you will never understand it even if you're a christian so what you were baptized so what you received the rank in the church so what if you haven't put your head under the sandals of jesus christ you will never understand the groom the heavenly groom you will not you will be talking out of your empty head being boastful taking pride in your certificate called PhD in theology. <laughs> what a joke. So many educated church leaders, look at the church. Live. It is in turmoil. Where is your PhD, church leader? What have you done with it? The church is in ruin. Satan is playing with you like a soccer ball because you were not united with the heavenly groom you spoke about him but you're a total stranger to him it is not he who says lord lord it is the one who does doing when are we going to do the will of the lord's father jesus christ's father when are we going to do his will when we fall in love with the Lord. Because then and then only when I'm in love with the Lord, then I'll do everything that makes him happy. It is not he who says, talk is cheap. I want to see action. Talk is cheap. When you love Jesus Christ of Nazareth from the heart, it is then and then only God can do all the good things in you so that you may shine before the whole world and let this world who lives in darkness come to this light and glorify not me but your father who art in heaven the father it is not he who says Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. It is the one who does the will of my father. I want to see people doing, not talking. The church today, majority only talk. Very few do things for the Lord. All talk into thin air. Vanity of all vanities, empty. Eloquent speech is no power in them. They keep on talking the living become dead before one word was spoken the dead became living we have filled the air with noise pollution 
Every channel, Jesus, Jesus. Every way, Jesus, Jesus. And everybody's being lost. What's going on? Talk. Galas. Cockatoos. They just repeat. Hello, hello. They just learned. You know? Copy. They went. They got brainwashed. Jesus is love. 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 What does he know about love? I don't know. Have you tasted this love? No. Have you lived this love? No. Have you asked the Lord to give you this love? No, no, no. I just learned it and I'm just repeating it. Like that birdie. Birdie, birdie. Maybe even that bird, when he learned to say, saying a few words, he thought he graduated from university. <laughs> we'll give him a certificate. <laughs> Honestly, I'm laughing out of sadness and hurt. The church has reached a level never should have. Never. Because we did not want to be one with Christ. Because to be one with Christ, you need to give up on a lot of worldly things. And we're not ready yet. Come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm weak. I cannot do it. I've tried. The more I tried, I failed. The more I tried to come closer, I kept my distance. I went the opposite direction. Lord, just like St. Paul is saying it to his epistles, in his epistles to the Romans, the things which I wanted to do, never did. And the things which I never wanted to do, them I did. Who's going to come and save me from this body of death? You thank God for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's the Lord Jesus who came to my rescue. So let, say, Lord, I can't do it. I tried it. I failed. The more I tried, the more I failed miserably. Today I surrender and I'll say, no more me. You do as you wish in me. I give you my whole life from head to toe, inside and out. You shape me, form me, mold me according to your divine will. Make me live for you, Lord Jesus. Make me live for you, Lord. I came to know you. Because it is only through knowing you, I have the chance to loving you. And I want to love you. Because you are worthy of every love I give you. Because you are love. You created me on the basis of love. You saved me and redeemed me on the basis of love. And today I'm coming back for a return of that love to the one who is love. I'm saying, I love you too, Lord. And I'm coming back to give you my heart. And I ask you, give me your heart and let that heart be united in you and become one with the sacred heart of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then when you love the Lord, the natural instinct, you'll start doing the things that put smile on his face. It's natural. So the Lord says, you want me to be happy? Yes, Lord. Forgive the one who's been stabbing you in the back all these years. Lord, in your name, I forgive them. I got nothing in my heart but love and forgiveness for them. And I wish them nothing but the best.
from the bottom of my heart. And I can't lie to you, Lord, because you're God. You know every heart, you know every mind, you know every soul, you know every being. I can't lie. So therefore, I'm standing in this holy of holies and I'm confessing, Lord, from the bottom of my heart, I love, forgive the ones who hurt Bishop Murray every day. I love them. And I'm ready to put the prawns on the barbie. And I'm ready to take you to Mackey's bro. And I get to your fish burger and a chocolate sundae. And I say to you, goody, goody. Well, was that the obstacle, goody, goody one? <laughs> okay. Honestly, <laughs> it takes much more energy and effort to do bad things than to do good things. Why are you doing bad things? That's naughty. It takes so much out of me to say I hate something or someone. But it's so easy to say I love you. Look, it's so natural. No energy. What kind of a brain is that, man? Why are you wasting your time, your life, your energy on bad things? Too good. Let the Lord take over you. Let the Lord. Just let go of you. Let him take over. It'll be so easy. People sometimes come and say, Bishop, this person is talking against you. I say, Hallelujah. I'm serious. I'm happy for me, not for him. Because they will have to answer to the Lord Jesus. But I'm happy for me because it's stunning. Thank you. I can't just have everyone loving. Some will have to not love me. It's okay. I love both of them. For the one who loves me, I'll give him tabouli. And the one who doesn't love me, Baba Ghanoush. And I say from the Jabal Lebanon, Pabak. In Kil Albi Pabak. Take things easy, focus on the Lord, not on what people say or do to you. Focus on the Lord. Leave everything in the Lord's capable hands. Get to know the Lord. Ask Him to help you to get to know Him. Because the more you know Him, the more you will love Him. The more you love Him, then everything outside of the Lord means nothing. Matters not. The world loves me, the world hates me, this guy is against me. This guy is not. Who cares? I'm not here for people. I'm here for the Lord. It's very simple. Trust me. I mean, trust the Lord, but trust me. It's very simple. Just focus on the Lord. Do not focus on what people say or the way they behave toward you. Just leave everything to the Lord. And when I see them outside, I'll still use my red belt in karate. Love the Lord. Because nothing really in this world is worth it. To waste your breath over and to waste your time on. Nothing is worth it. All right, let's bow our heads and ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us our sins, iniquities, our wrongdoings, and make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the true body and the true blood. Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all, pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith and the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son, and Holy Spirit forever. Amen.
Just a couple of announcements very quickly, and then um, we'll let you go not. Um, according to our church calendar, tomorrow, for the next three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have the feast and the, um, uh, of what we call the rogation of the Ninevites. This is more so in our church and also, I believe, in the um, uh, Coptic Orthodox Church. They do that as well. Uh, they celebrate that, and I believe also in the Syriac Orthodox Church. The rogation of the Ninevites, where um, one of the prophets of the Old Testament, uh, Jonah, went, was sent by God to go to Nineveh, which is in Iraq. And he decided to go totally the other way. <laughs> Human nature, not normal, isn't it? God says, go right, we go left. So he said to him, go right, and uh, Jonah, the prophet, decided to go left. And all the way to Tarshish, that was Spain somewhere, so opposite direction. And then he went into this ship, he hid himself, and then the whole sea went wild. And finally they threw him over, overboard. And this big whale was prepared by God, swallowed him, and took him all the way to Nineveh, Iraq. So at the end of the day, who wins? God. So give up. Stop fighting. Stop being stubborn. Because you can't win with God. He will keep on breaking you until you say, I wave the white flag. Why don't you do it from the start and be a good boy and a good girl? So yeah, the rogation of the invites. Uh, starting tomorrow, uh, we have a, um, our special prayers. Uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m., Tuesday 10 a.m., and then we have the Holy Mass service for the rogation of the invites on Wednesday at 6 p.m. So please join us. Even if you don't understand Aramaic, it's okay. That's fine. It's a prayer. It's beautiful. Ask the Lord, the Holy Mother, and Jonah the prophet to be with you, to help you. Um, so tomorrow at 10 a.m. is the prayer, and Tuesday 10 a.m. is the prayer as well. And then Wednesday is the Holy Mass service at 6 p.m., more than welcome to joining us. And by the way, uh, this is your church. This is your home. Uh, even if you are non, uh, a non-Assyrian background, you are family. This is your home. And this bishop is your servant. The house is yours. I serve you in the house of the Lord. So, there is no difference. Don't ever say, what nationality are you? What is your background? What is your race? What is your color? In Christ, we are one. There is no difference. So this is your home. So you can, you can come whenever you choose to because it's your home. You can tell me what to do. And I won't be upset because the Lord taught me to love you. You're my children in Christ. And daddy, daddy's honor is to kiss the feet of his children. So I'm kissing everyone's feet. Because that's an honor to a father when he kisses the feet of his children. This is the Lord. This is how he taught me. So yes, so tomorrow is the rogation of the invites. Tomorrow, 10 a.m., prayer. Tuesday, 10 a.m., prayer. And then Wednesday, 6 p.m., Holy Mass service. Youth ministry, uh, next month, uh, March, if you are between the ages of 18 and 40, and if you'd like to join our youth ministry, please, I encourage you, if you are between the ages of 18 and 40, please do join us and uh, enroll uh, and, and register and become a part of this youth ministry. Um, from next month, uh, March, our meeting will be on Wednesday, the 27th of March. It's the, the last Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. here at the church. So if you haven't joined, you can come on the day and just join the youth ministry. It's Wednesday, the 27th of March at 6 p.m. if you are between 18 and 40 years of age. Also, this is from our youth ministry. Uh, they are organizing a retreat in July from the 26th Friday to Sunday the 28th of July a spiritual retreat please enroll put your name down if you are between 18 and 40 this is a spiritual retreat for our youth ministry um, for from Friday the 26th to Sunday the 28th of July 
put your name down and come to these spiritual retreats very vital another thing is the holy land we are by the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ we are going to the holy land this year in the beginning of may to be there in that holy week the the, uh, the passion of christ we'll be there on good friday god willing in jerusalem the old jerusalem good friday and then saturday where the holy fire comes from the tomb of the lord and this has been happening every year for the last 2024 years non-fail and it happens on the julian old calendar and it is genuine let me assure you it's got nothing to do with orthodox by the way if you're catholic don't think don't be disheartened and say how come the light of the lord coming out on orthodox uh, uh, sunday resurrection the lord is god he is not orthodox he is not catholic he is none of these names the lord chooses the day he wants to choose nothing to do with orthodox so just because this light appears on the old orthodox calendar that doesn't mean they are good boys the lord chose the israelite nation they were the most stubborn when the lord chooses he chooses the worst of all not the best but this day has got nothing to do with anyone it's got to do with him he rose on this day and for the lord's sake let us come down from our high horses and just accept what the lord has chosen to do on this day he saved the world those who accepted it that's the day where well, you gonna argue with him and say no look seriously enough every christian needs to celebrate sunday resurrection on this calendar it's not orthodox calendar it's God chose this day. They wanted to choose another Sunday, neither Catholic nor Orthodox day. Look, unbelievable. What stubbornness is this? So if you'd like to join us <laughs> to go on this beautiful pilgrimage, there are a couple of seats left and they are going very, very shortly. In fact, I'll tell you, Monday is the cutoff. Monday night is the cutoff day. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night is the cutoff. If you'd like to join us, there are a couple more seats left. You can come to the Holy Land. If you'd like to join just after the Holy Mass, see one of the youth group committee members. Put your name, your number down on a piece of paper. Give it to them and say, I'd like to know more about the Holy Land trip. And the organizer will contact you. I'll explain everything you need to know about the trip. There are only a couple of seats left. It'll be the cutoff is Monday night. So if you're interested today and tomorrow, you've got the chance to put your name down. Uh, we'll be there on the um, on Good Friday and then where the holy fire comes on Saturday. And then Sunday resurrection and and then we'll go to other parts of Israel. We'll go to Galilee. We'll go to Nazareth. We'll go to all the beautiful places. The Holy Mother where she lived, the Lord Jesus, where he chose the apostles everywhere, everywhere. So if you'd like to join us, please, you've got your last chance till Monday night. Um, last thing is um, parents that have enrolled their children in the Sunday School Divine Heart. If you haven't completed the forms, please complete them and give them back to the teachers as soon as possible. This is from the ages of 5 to 16. Sunday School is also another service we provide for parents who have children. So when you come to the Holy Mass, you can leave your children with the Divine Heart Sunday School, they'll be looked after by our beautiful teachers. Um, and they'll be taught the, the, the Word of Christ, the Holy Bible, and so many other prayers while you are enjoying the Holy Mass service without interference by the beautiful angels. God bless you. I love you. But Jesus loves you the most. And very lastly, um, uh, if I could ask everyone to uh, join, uh, join me in um, welcoming this young man all the way from Germany. Uh, he is a 17-year-old exchange student from Germany. His name is Louis. So, uh, Louis, welcome, my dear friend. Uh, where is your where is show of hand, Louis? Come on, don't be embarrassed. Uh, I'd like to, yeah, come on, put your hands together for Louis. He was excited to see this good old-looking bishop. 
He's seen him uh, through a screen. Now he's seeing him face to face. Now, which one, Lewis, is more more handsome, the screen bishop or this face to face bishop, the real life bishop? Now, put your hands together for it. <laughs> In an American way, my man. All right, welcome, my dear Lewis. I pray you enjoy your stay in Sydney, Australia, and uh, whatever you are uh, trying to achieve in the future, may the Lord Jesus make it possible for you. God bless you. And uh, today, after the Holy Mass service, we are baptizing one young man um, all the way from Queensland. For those who would like to stay back, if you, if you can, the baptism will take place straight after the Holy Mass service. It will not be live streamed. So those who are watching at home, play, it will not be, it will not be live streamed. But if you'd like to stay at the church and um, join in this, uh, you know, joyous occasion where somebody's receiving the Lord Jesus, so you're more than welcome to do. So congratulations, my dear friend. I wish you all the best. Look after this new birth. Um, and you belong to the Lord Jesus. You belong to an apostolic uh, church. Always be proud of that. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Let us pray, peace be with us. The grace of the Holy Spirit be with you, with us, and with all who receive you. 